You've just come back from a, a little tour around the continent of Africa. You know, welcome first in and, and, and tell us about this journey that you've been on the last couple of weeks. Well, uh, I uh, started off in Nairobi and I spent uh, a considerable amount of time in Kampala. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a fairly dramatic week in Kampala with a breakdown of peace talks between the DRC and the M23 yeah. rebels. Uh, and then I dropped down to Johannesburg. But uh, yeah, I do uh, have to do a certain amount of travel for the job. Absolutely. Well, it's, some, some people would say that it's uh, one of the perks of the job, but once you've been on the road for a, a long, long time, it can become a little bit tedious, yeah? Well, it's, it's definitely quite um, hard going. I've done three trips to Iraqi Kurdistan this year uh, for extended periods of time. Yeah. I'm based in Washington. Of course, one of the problems about being on the other side of the Atlantic is that uh, they're long flights. Yeah, they're long flights. So just a quick insight about Working on the African continent compared to working in other areas of conflict, uh, is it a little bit more difficult or is it becoming a lot easier? It's becoming easier in some senses. I mean, I think there was a time perhaps in terms of the international news agenda where things in Africa seemed a little quiet. There wasn't quite so much appetite. What we've seen over the last few years is a huge demand, an increase in demand for content yeah. uh, and stories out of Africa. Of course, we have conflict zones. We have uh, counterterrorism efforts by the U.S. So I think certainly from the international media's perspective, the African continent is hugely important. I wanted to ask you about uh, U.S. counterterrorism efforts, especially with the insurgency in Kenya, and, and, and how are they fighting, or what's the plan on fighting al-Shabaab uh, on the continent? Well, I think the White House is under a huge amount of pressure and caught a little bit between a rock and a hard place because it's under pressure, of course, to tackle al-Shabaab. It's had some degree of success. We saw a strike against mm. a Somali uh, militant last month, which succeeded in getting their top explosives expert. Uh, but generally, uh, the Obama administration's drones policy has come under attack. There are demands for the White House to be a lot more transparent and accountable. Uh, there is talk now that U.S. Uh, forces will train up Libyan security forces to mm. help in counterterrorism missions. But I think it's a little bit hard for the U.S. administration to navigate some of these issues. Human rights activists yeah. calling for a lot more transparency over civilian casualties and the White House won't release numbers on the number of people that have died in drones attacks. Collateral damage is a, is a, is a real hate word on the African continent. I wanted to ask you about the DRC and the peace talks there. You were, you were there when things broke down. And What do you make of, of the M23 and, and the ongoing strife in the eastern parts of that country? Well, I think the first thing to say about uh, the breakdown of talks was that it was fairly humiliating for Uganda. Uganda, which had taken a lead role as mediator. The DRC delegation kept both international spectators mm -hmm. and, and Uganda waiting for hours, as you know, and then refused to enter the room. They refused also to sign the agreement. Yeah. And of course, with any peace deal, it boils down to the fine print, the small print, but in this case it was a specific word, the, the word agreement. They didn't want to sign up to an agreement with the very rebels that they had defeated, yeah. and a declaration of course would have paved the way for a transition. Is, 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 there, is there a sense in the DRC that uh, these rebels, especially the M23, they were supported by Uganda and Rwanda uh, up to this point? I think it's not just a sense, it's a blatant accusation. Uh, the DRC coming out quite forcibly and saying Uganda is to blame for backing these rebels. Yeah. Uganda, of course, hit back and said, look, we're happy to step aside if you don't want us to uh, mediate this process any longer. But Let's be clear, it's likely to regroup with other rebel groups uh, operating within the DRC. Unless the DRC sorts out its own internal political situation, yeah. then there's unlikely to be a lasting peace. Let's finish up by going back to Washington, where you're where you, where you based. Just, uh, I'm really interested in uh, the, the revamp or the overall of the health system in the U.S., or Obamacare, as it's affectionately known. Just tell us what they think of it in Washington. Well, I mean, it's a hugely complex issue. I think even if you fundamentally agree that America's very broken healthcare system needs to be fixed, you can't deny the fact that it has been a botched rollout. Two main issues, the website, which is where millions of uninsured Americans were supposed to shop uh, for new healthcare plans, broke down, basically crashed. Did Obama know that there were glitches? He's distanced himself, but we've got a paper trail now to top administration yeah. officials saying, 
that they knew that there was going to be a problem. And also one of his core election pledges was that if you already have health care and you like it, you don't have to lose it. That turns out not to be true. Yeah. And people have had their health care cancelled, millions of people. So there's a lot of anger. Finally, how is he doing in the polls? Oh, catastrophic. I mean, it's been a terrible week for Obama. Three devastating polls. He's taking a public beating. And what is really dangerous for him is that he seems to be losing uh, ground with some of his core groups, Hispanics, women, millennials, the under 35s, the people that yeah. voted for him. Uh, he has taken a beating. And more importantly, I think, one poll suggests that 50% of the American people think that he actively lied about Obamacare. So the Republicans who have been feeding this very poisonous uh, paralysis on Capitol Hill just need to stand on the side, sidelines now and see Obama bleed. Well, that's very interesting. Uh, uh, I'm sure that our viewers enjoy that little bit of an insight. But Nina, thank you for joining us uh, today. I'm sure you'll give us uh, lots of lots of updates now in the months, uh, months to come uh, from Washington. That's our Washington correspondent, Nina Maria Potts, who will, uh, well, who's in South Africa, and when she gets back to Washington, she'll keep us updated, even on this very show. Let's